Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm gonna to be doing some travel stories um, from my first trip to Colombia. Before I dig into everything today, today's beverage of choice is Aguila and this is the national beer of Colombia. So this is sold everywhere. Um, probably the best equivalency back home is Bud Light or Budweiser. Um, I think it's a little bit better to be honest though. It's very refreshing, light, easy beer. All right, guys. So let's 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 take you back. You know, back in 2019. This is pre-COVID, pre-pandemic. No one's worried about germs yet. All right. I know it feels like a lifetime ago, but but stay with me. All right, guys. This is my third video. How, how am I doing? Are the jokes coming across? Am I loose? Am I am I still a little uptight? Like, you need to leave me a comment. Am I still being uptight? Do I need to relax? What do I need to be doing? Please tell me. I would really like to improve my videos. So all right, the day came, guys. I'm excited. I'm going to Columbia. This is this is my last day in the office. I show up to the office like an NBA player shows up for game day. I'm showing up with like my favorite shirt. I had a lobster shirt on. I'm wearing jeans, and then I throw on a nice little nice little sports jacket. I had the hair on point. I was feeling good. I was ready. Uh, so bang, all right, right after work, I went right to the airport. I had my bags packed. I was gone. I was going off to Bogota, baby. So when I first get into Bogota, I didn't plan my trip to Colombia too well. Just being honest with you guys, I did very little research. I just knew I was going for three weeks and I was gonna wing it with my buddy and just kind of go with the flow. But I didn't really process the country I was going to, that it was a third world country. So immediately I land and I am just culture shock. Bang, it hits me. All of a sudden, you know, taxi, taxi, everything's in spanish you know I, i'm just like I, i'm i'm in a whirlwind I, I don't know what's going on and i get there late at night too so all of a sudden scenes from narcos were just flooding back to me just flooding back to me um like this scene here Señores, les voy a decir quién soy. yo soy pablo emilio escobar gaviria Mis ojos están en todos lados. O sea, ustedes no pueden hacer una puta sola If you haven't mierda. seen Narcos, you need to see Narcos. It's unbelievable. I don't want that to deter you from going to Colombia because you definitely should go to Colombia. But Narcos is just an awesome series. But anyways, I'm in the cab and I'm seeing these scenes. All these scenes are flooding in. I don't know the language. I'm freaking out. I'm like, I made a big mistake. <laughs> but then I get to the hostel and immediately I'm, I'm more relaxed. I see my buddy. It's got that hostile vibe with music and people from around the world and a bar. And I'm like, all right, calm down, Colin. All right, relax. You're going to be fine. Um, but so we went out our first night. And wow, what a time. Immediately, I was hooked on Colombia like a drug. And I'm not talking about an actual drug that they distribute down here in Colombia. But I'm talking about I felt adrenaline just hit me. And the reason being is we went out. We went to a nice dinner. And we were walking back to the hostel. And all of a sudden, there's a nice hole in the wall bar that is cram packed, like probably 10 to 15 people in there. And it was loud with Latin music, just like a bunch of like it was a bunch of friends, chicas, chicos, just hanging out and just a hole in the wall bar. And we, we popped in for a couple beers and it was just unbelievable. Like the, oh. everyone was dancing and singing and we couldn't speak, but we were joking around about clothing or general things um, but I remember from that moment I was hooked on film and I was like wow this is this is a very cultural feeling of you know people are just happy here you know I'm not judging the country on one day but this first experience was just very like this is awesome this is really really cool so let's hop cities out of Bogota on to Medellin where I end up I'm living now I don't have a big story about Medellin I'm just gonna say that I got hooked like a normal traveler on the chicas and I kind of fell in love immediately with a chica that was you know just very you know touchy-feely and paisas have a very singy songy the way they talk hola como estas and touching you and it's just like oh gets your heart beating like oh my god and they're unbelievably beautiful unbelievably beautiful so I got hooked my buddy got hooked on a girl as well and it became the theme of the trip where we were like texting them whenever we could get on Wi-Fi. Like some days we were going a couple days to like a mountain resort or in the jungle somewhere. We didn't have cell service. As soon as we came out, went to a nice little cafe, popped right on our phones to text our chicas. 
And it was a struggle too, because we had to Google Translate everything. <laughs> After Medellin, we went to this, we went up north um, to Santa Marta. We didn't spend any time in Santa Marta. We immediately hopped over to Minca, which this is, we're all on the backpacker route here. And Minca is this very, very small town, uh, but it's really, really beautiful. Um, it's just a small cultural, not cultural, how do I phrase this? It's definitely a tourist spot, but it's very, there's a lot of hiking and there's a lot of unbelievable sunsets. You're, you're in that jungle field, so there's mosquitoes, um, but really, really cool town. And I'll just give you a little funny story here. So me and my buddy Joe, we decided we were gonna go do a, a big hike. We wanna do a big hike. And well, it was a big hike. <laughs> it was much more than we bargained for. And I just was trusting Joe at this point. I didn't do any research. I didn't know what I was getting into. And Joe has a habit of not telling me what I'm about to get into. He just says, oh, we're gonna do this hike. It'll be a couple hours, not a big deal. I'm like, all right, perfect. It was more than a couple hours. <laughs> the name of this hike is called Dos Pinos, which stands for two pines, two pine trees. And so that's that's what you're gonna get, get at the top is two pine trees. So when you find the two pine trees, you're there, you're done. But three, four hours later, we find the pine trees, but we're starving, we're thirsty, we're, we're kind of miserable. And we get to these two pine trees. And when I say that's it, that's it. <laughs> There's no view. There's no. There's nothing to look at. There's nothing to do. There's. There's no sign or anything. It's just two pine trees, and that's it. Turn around. Go home. That's your hike. Wasn't thrilled about that. Wasn't thrilled about that. Mostly because I was hungry and thirsty at this point. So at this point, we start going back down. We're trying to pick up the pace a little bit because now we're, we're really hungry. Um, so we're picking up the pace, and all of a sudden, we see another storm coming in. Perfect. <laughs> so we keep going, we're starting to pick up our pace. We finally get down to the bottom. Uh, I want to say two, two and a half hours. And then it just comes down, down for him. Um, and we're still not all the way in town yet. We're just like at the bottom of the hike. So we have to hire two motos, like two scooters, two guys to just bring us back into town. We didn't really care about the price. We were just like, just get us back into town. So they take us but it is just downpouring. And so we're on these motors, holding on for dear life, can't see anything. The roads are slippery. I'm just like, uh, this was a mistake. <laughs> um, it was one of those moments where I was like, if my mom was seeing what I was doing, um, I'd be coming home, I'd be grounded there. I mean, she can't ground me anymore, but, but you know what I mean? I'd be in big trouble. She would not be in, she would not be a happy camper. I mean, let me go grab another beer real quick, two seconds. Dos Aguilas. Where was I? Oh yes, the year was 2019. Pre-pandemic in a time long ago. Working on my intros. Next up, we went to Cartagena. And Cartagena, I don't have any story from Cartagena. I, I got a stupid little story. Not, you know what? Skip the Cartagena story. Cartagena is pretty, really nice spot. I'll just sum up the story really quick. Me and my me and Joe and some other people from the hostel, we wanted to go to an island party. We're like, oh, we're up by the beach. Let's go to an island party. Let's go do something on an island. This would be great. And there was nothing really in town that weekend or there was nothing that we could find online. So we asked the hostel and they're like, oh yeah, we can take you out to an island. No problem, that'd be great. I was like, perfect. So we all signed up. I want to say 10, 15 of us. Um, next thing you know, they take us out to the island. We get there. It's a local island. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not a big party island. Um, that there's not like a big party scene or music or anything. It's purely just like we hired some chairs and like a table and got got some meals. We we got some food. And I guess the funniest part of the story was the guy comes over saying we've got three meals today. We've got fish number one, fish number two, and fish number three. And we're like, okay, what, what's fish number one? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> we're like, all right, do you, do you know what fish number two is? And he's like, no. <laughs> so we're like, all right, what are we going to do, gang? I guess I'll get fish number two. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. So we all just ordered a fish. We just picked a number, um, and, we, and the fish came out. And, and here's a little picture of it. Um, 
Anyways, funny memory. It was just not what we wanted. We wanted a party island. We wanted to have a fun day drinking. And we, we were drinking, and it was fun. We were in a, a good group of people, but it, it wasn't uh, the best experience overall. So let me skull this beer and get on to the next one, Mike. All right, guys, I wanted to keep this pretty brief. I, I don't want to go into too many stories here. Like I said, I don't even expect this to get too many views. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like these travel stories. I hope you had a little laugh or, or got something out of this as well. I hope you come to Colombia and create your own experience because it's such a beautiful country um, and there's so much to offer. Salud, chicos and chicas. <laughs>